I started off today's video, uh, I don't know, almost a week ago now, but it was just going to be a simple uh, how-to on the hydraulic filter on the wood splitter. And as most of my projects do, it spiraled out of control into, oh, you know, I'm tired of my splitter taking so long because it's only got a single wedge on it. So uh, in today's video, I'm going over how I made a four-way wedge for, or turned the single wedge into a four-way. It's not removable. It's all one piece. Uh, you'll see it as we go through the video, and uh, this is why. Uh, I process anywhere from at least 60 face cord a year, um, usually closer to 80 plus after we're done with helping my uncle across the street. This pile behind me is about 20 logger cord, maybe a little bit more. All the logs are about eight feet tall, which I can touch eight feet, so they're a little over eight feet. You can see how high the stack is. It's, th this is a little over 60 face cord and I have probably another three to four full cord sitting up there right now that I got to process. Um, and that's just for next year. I still need to process at least 15 to 20 face cord for this year. So right now it's uh, November 9th. I still have to process at least another 15 to 20 face that we need to use this year. This, this behind me is gonna be for 24, 25 season. Uh, with that said, let's jump into it. Uh, I went ahead and ordered this Greason Hydraulics K2300 uh, service kit for this whole assembly, this uh, hydraulic filter assembly. The filter element is a steel mesh. It's a very, very fine steel screen. They call it 100 micron. I thought it was a square seal because it had these, you know, the square edges on it, right? And I was wrong. I mean, sure, it looks that way now, but you see how it's kind of chamfered on the edges here? That's because that's what it's supposed to look like new. So this, with the base gasket on the outside, goes through the housing. Might as well just do this. I'm gonna assume that's in place. I don't see how it could be. I'm just gonna press it in there because that's where it needs to be. It feels about right. That's what it looks like now. Start with my hand. So this morning I was uh, planning on coming out here and wrapping this up and getting it out and taking it out and actually splitting up some wood. But I started thinking to myself, you know, every cycle that I make to split a piece of wood, you know, say I got one round and I split it once, then I have to turn it and turn it over, split another piece, then turn that other the other half in, on its side. Anyway three strokes or three cycles back and forth to split one, you know, say 10, 12 inch diameter log into four pieces. I've got the material here. I'm going to make a four way for this. Now I really wanted to do a slip on four way wedge, adjustable up and down, but I've got like 80 face I got to process in the next uh, month, month and a half. And honestly, I just don't feel like spending the time and energy right now, you know, a couple days worth of time and energy to make a slip on adjustable. And furthermore, it'd be really tough with this type of setup. You know, I've got these two bucking bars here uh, in case a log gets stuck to the wedge. Now, mine is set up with the wedge on the ram side and the push block set up as a stationary. If it was the other way around, it'd be a lot easier to have an adjustable four way wedge slip on style. So I said, screw it, I'm just going to make two winglets here, weld them on and be done with it. So looking here, you know, this is about four to six inches and I think that'll be just fine for, you know, eight to 10 inch logs to get the bottom half split off uh, into four pieces. Now, because of the shape of this, it's gonna be, I either have to grind this smooth to, to stick a chunk there and weld it on. So I'm using this little contour gauge so that's the approximate shape that I need to cut the edge of the metal out for the winglet in order to just basically clean it, you know, throw a little wire wheel on there, clean it up and just weld it on. So I've got these chunks of steel. They're from like a snow plow scraper blade. As a matter of fact, you can see where the uh, carbide used to be in it. This one's pretty much the same way. It looks like three quarter inch ish. Some pretty stout stuff. Unfortunately, it's already got a, a bit of a chamfer to it, so that'll make it easier to put an edge on it. That's our piece. Cuts turned out pretty good. 
probably use a new tip on that plaz cutter. Uh, it needs a little bit of grinding. Not a lot. This part right here sticks out too much. But I think right about there will be good. We're going to have to grind that up anyway. Not too bad. Saved a lot of grinding. Definitely fits a little bit better. Got to grind a little bit out there where I had that snafu. You can see how nasty that is, but overall, I like it. All right, so looking at these two, you can see the one that I haven't messed with yet. It's got this big flat spot on here, and I was actually going to start grinding it like I did that one. And I realized it would take me all day to grind that down. I mean, this is probably three quarter, maybe even one inch. So just under one inch, probably seven eighths or so, somewhere in there, maybe 15 sixteenths. So I put probably four or five beads of 7018 up here on the top of this one. Well, actually two of them. I got the other one sitting over there, but that made it a lot closer. So I'm going to put at least one more bead up here, probably two. That way when I grind it uh, to a point, or that way I can grind that to a point. And uh, honestly, I think the 7018 is going to be substantially stronger or harder than the base material. Let's check that. Okay, so I picked up this cool little uh, HRC hardness tester kit just off of Amazon, but it's made in Japan, so I'm sure it's pretty good quality. Yep, so I was able to scratch that with an HRC 40, I think that is. All right, now let's try it on the, the tip up here. I'll try it one more time right here. Yep, nice good scratch there. Now let's try it up here. Oh yeah. So I'm pretty sure that 7018 is still harder. Now let's take a quick gander at what it's gonna look like on here. I'm gonna have this right about there. That turned out all right. That's a big grinder. Dang, that thing's heavy. So one thing to note here is that I'm mostly putting the ramp of that wedge on the top. So the wood will slide under it, but I don't want there to be an incline on the bottom because that will jam wood underneath of it between the winglet and the I-beam. So I'm putting the bulk of the wedge on the top. All right, so now we'll use a flap disc to kind of clean it up a little bit. Figure if I angle it down just a smidge, I mean just a smidge, um, I'll be able to avoid anything getting caught under there. And I'm pretty confident in this. I think it's going to be just fine. All right, we're going to take one close look here before I start tacking up. And uh, while I have it off the unit, I'm going to go ahead and fix this too and then try to angle it down a little bit more because crap always catches under there as it's sliding. All right, so yesterday was a really frustrating day. Uh, I love the way this looks. I think that the winglets turned out perfect. Uh, I don't know if I could have done a better job, uh, but I ran into a huge, huge issue. I did foresee this. However, I dramatically underestimated how big of an issue it was gonna be. Uh, I know I had mentioned earlier in the making of this or the fabrication process that I was kind of worried about logs getting jammed up in here as it's you know split sideways and then split again right here. And yeah, it's a huge, huge issue. Um, not only does it rise up right here at the base, it also hits these bolt heads right here. So I need to get it to split starting about here, about an inch or so higher 
than the I-beam. Now, if this was a stationary uh, four-way on this side, wouldn't be an issue at all. But if you've got a movable four-way wedge, the ram side, you're gonna have to take this into account. So I think I have an idea that will be the quickest way to solve this issue for this season. And honestly, after this season, I'm probably gonna swap these around. I'm gonna cut this whole block off of this side, mount the four-way on that side, put a pushing ram on this side, a push block on the ram side. Uh, anyway, let's head back in the shop. While I'm getting set up in the shop, I'm gonna show some of the frustrations I went through yesterday. Works. I just ran a couple through it and I did have one smaller piece kind of get wedged under here. With the, and I kind of noticed that when I was putting it together, these bolts right here, or the bolt heads, are kind of wedging it and getting stuck there. You know, it goes from that wide down to that wide. So I'm scared my camera's gonna go over again. log is getting jammed between the uh, the fin there and the, the plate the slide plate I mean jammed like <laughs> it's like one unit ah. I took some uh, cardboard out there and I cut out this shape that will fit on that little slope surface and raise the piece of wood high enough to avoid hitting the uh, the bolts, or at least really close. Like that, yep. So that cutout looks pretty good, so you guys can get a better look over there. But I'm gonna have it, ooh, warm. I'm gonna have it angled out just slightly. It'll slide up, go just under there, and that should be just about right. If I have to knock that down a little bit, I will. As it's going forward, the log gets caught on the ramp there and lifts it up higher than those bolt heads. We'll try it out. I don't know what to do after this other than starting from scratch. So I had already done a full closeout. I was frustrated, gonna call it quits, but I got to thinking about it. I was like, you know what? I have almost 80 face core to do, if not more. I don't wanna be dealing with any stuck logs whatsoever. So I, the last couple hours, I went ahead and fabbed up some more steel and put it all together. I'll show you right quick. So I just added all of that right here and these two little pieces and this piece in here. So hopefully now that, now that all that's there, when the wood gets caught up here, it rides up the ramp, slides up that, and then is high enough that once the bottom of the wood is here, it's above the heads of those bolts, which I think it is. Well, I would call that a success. Uh, it's not perfect. I have a couple that get a little bit jammed up, but not bad, not like beating them out before, not a single one. I had two pieces, I mean, you saw it. So, I mean, I did all that in what, a couple of minutes tops? I am really happy with this. Note to self though, if you're gonna make a four-way wedge, put it on the fixed end. That way you don't have anything underneath and make sure when you get the little winglets, the little four-way parts, that they're angled a little bit down and the sharpened edge is facing down. That way anything that goes under it 
doesn't get wet. If it's like that, as it goes through, it'll get wedged, right? So make sure it's facing down. That way parts can go up and out of the way and nothing can get squeezed underneath and get caught and jammed in there. Um, I think this one's gonna work for me just fine. I'll make it work. And if I gotta make it another adjustment or add an, a little bit of steel under there, I will. Um, but I'll tell you what, you know, <laughs> getting four pieces out of a single down and back versus what I, I did last year for over 90 face cord, you know, three cycles down and back to get four pieces out of a, you know, say a 12 inch round. Uh, this is going to be a game changer for me. So, Hey, thanks for watching everybody. Appreciate you sticking around. If you like this kind of stuff, please hit that like, and subscribe. If you got any suggestions on stuff that you'd like to see around here, please throw it in the comment section. Keep yanking on them bootstraps. We'll catch you on the next video.